Hello friends, today let's discuss what's building up in Afghanistan, the war-torn country that has been going through conflict for over four decades. The United States has uh, announced to resume dialogue with the Taliban regime in Doha in the coming days. Big question facing us all and the people of Afghanistan is, what is the end objective of this resumption of dialogue between the Taliban and the United States. Will it extricate the Taliban regime from the current pressing economic financial problems that it has been facing ever since storming into Kabul back to power on August the 15th? Right now, the US holds more than $9 billion that belong to the state of Afghanistan and the United States had announced it will not be releasing those funds because it does not recognize the Taliban regime. Now, the regime is also not recognized by the rest of the world. And that basically means international financial choke on the capacity, on the ability of the Afghan regime to deal internationally, to transact any business, and with no access to its own funds, and by implication, even otherwise, the Afghan government and its traders, its businessmen cannot transact internationally, basically forcing them to only indulge in barter trade, either with Pakistan or Iran or both, of course. And that is the only avenue that is available to the Taliban regime as far as international business transaction is concerned. And ironically or sadly, even the European Union that had pledged more than $1.2 billion in humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan cannot be channeled right now in the absence of banking channels. And that's why the United Nations and the European Union representatives have been calling for the unfreezing of the Afghan government's funds or at least of allowing them some limited banking channels which can then provide the assistance that has been announced not only by the European Union but also by the United States itself which is like more than 450 million dollars in humanitarian assistance. So until that unfreezing of funds happens it will be very difficult for the Afghan Taliban regime to sustain itself. Uh, humanitarian assistance alone cannot sustain the governance structures and if we take together the roughly half a million government employees plus the Afghan forces and the police, it all comes to million strong uh, manpower uh, that is operating currently or that belongs to the state of Afghanistan. So how to sustain that? It will be an extremely difficult task beyond three, four months. So until that unfreezing of banking channels happens, uh, it will be an arduous task for the Taliban regime, which is facing pressure, not only by the international community for the so-called inclusive government uh, and more democratic rights for women, but also from within a socio-economic crisis is currently brewing in the absence of adequate funding. Even those people and traders and investors, businessmen who have uh, tens of thousands of dollars in the Afghan banks don't have access to those banks more than beyond like $25,000. So every businessman can draw $25,000 a month, but nothing beyond. And this basically leads to the shrinking of business activities of the Afghan traders. And that means lesser supplies of items of necessity. And this means people will be forced to either leave Afghanistan or starve or indulge in social unrest. And that is the prospect that Afghan Taliban are currently facing, particularly after the United States has registered the National Resistance Front, led by people like uh, former Vice President Amrullah Saleh and uh, several others. They have vowed to continue their struggle against the Taliban regime from inside the United States. Another parallel front has also emerged in uh, the Tajikistan's uh, capital Dushanbe in the name of Republic, led by former National Security Advisor, in fact, Foreign Minister as well, 
Hanif Atma and several like-minded people. So this means there will be a multi-pronged resistance uh, to the Taliban regime. So if that resistance picks up in strength and the freeze on the Afghan funding and international banking continues, uh, this would uh, probably, most probably precipitate an internal an implosion of the Taliban regime with uh, socio-economic unrest, protests and uh, resourcelessness of the government might force it to uh, adopt ways which will again be seen as uh, unethical and illegal by the outside world like the poppy uh, production. And the Taliban have uh, also already cautioned that uh, if we see an unusual production of poppy in Afghanistan this year, don't blame us because people are looking for jobs, they need livelihood and poppy is the only easily growable thing in Afghanistan. So don't blame us. All we want is recognition and uh, facilitation of banking channels so that we can transact with the rest of the world uh, with ease. This is the message from Taliban and if uh, the ban on them, the undeclared sanctions continue, then uh, we are in for more trouble for the Taliban regime as well as more unrest uh, within Afghanistan itself.